Well, I'm joined by one of Liverpool's great heroes, John Conte. John, welcome <laughs> to nice. Talking Fights. Good to, to, to see you. I was just thinking, you know, you're a lad, big family, growing up in Liverpool, this great football city where football's kind of in the blood. But was it always going to be boxing for John Conte? I think so, yeah. When I was, I was 11 years of age when I started to box uh, for Kirby ABC. My dad showed me a few punches. He wasn't a boxer when I, when I was about 10 years of age. Then he took me down to Kirby ABC. And it was uh, like I used to play football at uh, St Kevin's Kirby and uh, also athletics. Yep. But it was boxing as well. So I had a choice of three. We saw in later life on, on Superstars that you're a pretty good all-round sportsman, really. Yeah, I like that. I like the athletics as well. Yeah, when I was in uh, uh, in, in Liverpool, uh, I like I say, I love that the decathlon and uh, that yep. type of thing, or pentathlon. Uh, well, kept decathlon really, uh, that field events and uh, yeah. But um, and I was, if I would have committed myself to that, I think I would have done okay. But it was like I said, out of the three of them, uh, athletics, football, and um, uh, uh, boxing. Uh, and I used to play with some great footballers. Terry McDermott was from our, my school. Yeah. They played for Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, some of the great uh, footballers were produced from there, from the school. And I used to play in the same team and there as a left back. But once you made your mind up for boxing, that was going to be it, was that it? That was it when I was, yeah. I totally committed myself to me uh, around about 17 and a half, 18. I uh, lost, come down to London, the Junior ABA Championships and battled in the Essex in 1968, and I failed miserably. I got stopped inside uh, three rounds, and uh, funny enough, uh, Alan Minter got stopped by the same guy on the same day because <laughs> uh, he had the semi-finals and the finals on the same day in Basildon. And I come back to uh, Liverpool and I thought, well, I'm going to commit, continue with this game. I better commit myself to it totally, and I did. And that was a simple. And uh, what is total commitment? Is it shutting everything out? Everything. Total commitment. That whatever the demands, you know, is uh, you're running twice, you're, you're training twice, running in the morning and uh, the, uh, gymnasium in the afternoon, basically. But it's a 24-hour. Eat, sleep and drink at 24 hours. So if it didn't tally up with boxing, walking through the day, if things didn't tally up with boxing, fitness went in one ear and out the other. Once I made that commitment as a senior, yeah. amateur, and certainly when I come to London... In it's the only months, way to succeed in sport, isn't it, really? Well, certainly it was, yeah, I would think so. Uh, certainly for me it was. It was total commitment, all or nothing. And you started to have real success, you know, ABA, Commonwealth titles, European titles, and your, you know, your names building and building and building. And boxing in those days, of course, was on terrestrial television. Huge audiences were watching you yeah, boxing be- and working your way up. Um, and then the big moment comes, the world title fight, the light heavyweight world title fight. Did you feel really confident going into that? Uh, yeah, not overconfident. Just I used to build my confidence on the fitness. My, my trainer, Georgie Francis, used to say, most fights are won and lost on the training ground. So I used to substitute the training ground for the fighter. So I used to wear heavy boots uh, and uh, weights in my hand. I used to run with a pack of fighters over Hampstead Heath in North London, where we was based with George, and uh, really give it everything, you know? Totally. So it was like a full tank of petrol in a car. It was total endurance. The fitness was there. That won't let you down. The only thing that let yeah. you down was your mind. And I thought, well, no, I don't need to. As long as I'm fit. No, I want to so you weren't nervous? Give it. Yeah, I was nervous. But I had a response to the nerves, which was the training I've done. At the, pet, the tank's full. And it's just my mind can let me down now. And I thought, well, that's, I'm not going to allow it. I had a choice of that. No, I'm just going to give it from round to round to see. Oh, it was 15 rounds then, see how... For you give it every, everything you've got every minute, and it was just another guy, the same as you. So he wasn't, he couldn't be stronger or fitter than you, yeah. As far as the training for and him. you did it, you won, and that was it, yeah. World champion, seventy-four, yeah. And I empire Bill Wembley, now Wembley Arena. And suddenly, John Conti becomes a bit of a superstar, really. And you're on This Is Your Life, and you're photographed and talked about, and you're in the gossip columns and stardom, yeah. As a ride, real stardom. As a ride. Well, it's true, you were a big, yeah. big, I mean, huge star. And, and suddenly, John, you know, you decide that acting is where you want to be as well. How did that all happen? Uh, the acting came from, uh, I was doing um, uh, commercials, advertising, different things, you know, uh, while I was boxing, you know. Yeah. You got an agent. Uh, and then um, 
I was, it wasn't until after I retired from boxing, actually. I, I was in Blood Brothers, uh, Willie Russell's musical, yep. Blood Brothers. Uh, so I liked the acting. Anyway, I loved the old acting. It was great going on there and just took direction. Like, you take your direction from your corner, man. You just took it from the director. Do this, walk here, stop there, say that, do it. And just, and on a great, like, the Willie Russell's musical. It just walked into you after a while, the character. Anyway, just gives such great, <laughs> great writing, as the actors say. It just came into me and I was super performing with these actors. Was it tough to cope with that level of fame and success? Uh, I would think so, yeah, it was. But you don't can't say that. It's like being in, when I go back in Liverpool, you can't say, well, I'm frightened or I don't really want to do this. All I want is the money. To build a big castle and have a good time, and you've got to and, do. Um, you, you've you've uh, got to take it all, haven't you? Yeah, really? you just you don't. You, there's no one to dialogue with there, or you feel you can't. You know, the dialogue was your vehicle. My vehicle was uh, the boxing, the sports, and boxing in particular. So at the time, and the same when you, uh, I forgot what the question was. Now. Well, I'm just saying, you know, you're dealing with that level of fame. It happens very quickly. Is it? Was that a problem? Again, I didn't think about it as that. I couldn't really answer to say yes. I had to mm. say, well, I was. I had, you know, I identified it was fame and it was affecting me this way. And should I make a choice? And should I take advice it was just from happening. somebody? It was just it happening. It was just happening. Yeah. And you dealt with it as it came along as best as you could. Yeah. And that's it. And you make mistakes up and down, just like the fights. You win some rounds, you lose some rounds, you know. And then you come away and you assess it. You assess it all after the fight. Well, you kept on winning, but in the end, you got quite a nasty injury, didn't you? Uh, well, a brain scan that you sort of had a bit of a little bit of a problem with. Well, that was trying to come back yeah. with uh, in a, trying to re, um, uh, make a comeback. Yes. When I tried to get my license back after I retired, mm. you know. So uh, they said they said it's, uh, it's like disturbance in the stem of the brain, you know. I knew there was a full-scale riot going on up there, but they could just <laughs> discover a slight disturbance. <laughs> but it is a rough old game, isn't it? It's a great game, which you cut out for it. Mine was boxing, football and athletics when I was in Liverpool. And like I say, I chose the boxing. And you just cut out for it, whatever it is, whatever yeah. you're into. And it's, you're there, you, it suited me. And what does it take to be a winner? Like I said, just training, uh, commitment, just total commitment. dedication, yeah. uh, listening to your team, your corner people, your manager, your promoter, it's all there when I came to London. And you've got to want it too, haven't you? Yeah, you wanted it, but you know what you're going into yeah. and you know what it's going to demand and are you going to commit yourself 100%, not 99.9% yeah. .9 in the preparation. So my trainer used to say, George Francis used to say to me, most fights are won and lost on the training ground. Yeah, so it's to, interesting. So I used to substitute... It's the, interesting. And... You know, through all that life, big lifestyle, partying, you had had some issues with alcohol, but you've dealt with that and put that behind you, yeah? Yeah, uh, I, uh, al alcoholism, I, I'm an alcoholic, and uh, I got, ended up in, uh, uh, with alcoholism. And uh, I hit rock bottom with that, uh, with the booze, uh, and, that, and it was great. The booze was fantastic. I love the booze, you know. Nine out of ten are safe drinkers. Mm. Booze, they say, mm. the gift of God that gladdens the heart. Crushed grapes. Some societies don't have it, but even some of those societies have problems because it's just another illness, alcoholism. Just another illness. Yeah. They said it's the third biggest killer of illness in Britain. Second in America, to be first, if you're honest, on the death certificates. The only illness that tells you I haven't got it, an illness of denial. So that was it. So I ate rock bottom and I went to an outfit, an organisation, who's got the most success in dealing with alcoholism yeah. uh, since Steve Lane's history. It. And sorted it. Yeah, and John, you've been, you know, you're much in demand, you've been much in demand over the years. Speaker, raconteur, <laughs> teller of stories and jokes at dinners and clubs and events and all the rest yeah. of it. And you're very well known on the circuit as a speaker. Uh, lockdown, COVID lockdown, you must have hated it. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, you just put it into perspective, you know, it's just the way it is, and it's a lot worse for other people, you know, some people are dying around yeah. out with this terrible things, you know, number one, uh, as far as the job was concerned of doing after dinner, speaking to sport and dinners, you know, that wasn't there, but uh, it was, um, I was still involved, I'm still involved with a company, uh, which yeah. uh, which was good, uh, and... Um, but uh, there was no dinners or sport dinners, but I uh, just, just deal with it, you work, just like yeah. the fights, really, you know, just the boxing, you deal with it. You see the opponent in front of you, take advice, and you just deal with it, work it through. And life's beginning to get back to normal and events are happening, but it's, we're not quite back where we were, I don't think. But no. We no, haven't quite think. recovered socially from the whole thing. No, but... not at all. Uh, but I love, to me, it's just like 
you know, the boxing is like a great metaphor for me, you know, the ring. You got your corner people there, they're looking out, they know what they're doing. Yeah. The trainers, the promoters, the managers, they're fantastic. But when the bell goes, it's just you. You gotta call yeah. the shots yeah. on the day. Yeah. You know, deal with life on life's terms one day at a time. Yeah, well, it's, you know what, if you're looking for a speaker for a sporting dinner, you got the man here, it's the legend John Conti. John, I want to say a huge thanks for coming on, joining us and sharing your, sharing your amazing life story. Cheers, Nadal. Thank thanks, you. Sir.